Welcome back to the Oscrow Soccer Show, and uh, it's with great pleasure that we welcome our guest, first guest for tonight, uh, a former uh, Melbourne Knights NSL youth player and long-term St Albans Dynamo player, um, who is now heading up uh, Keelor Downs College Soccer Program and a teacher at Keelor Downs for quite a few years now. Welcome to the show, Josip Lonchanic. Thank you, gentlemen. Always a pleasure to uh, to hear your your rundown of the the weekly happenings in Australia and overseas. So glad to be part of it this week. I know sometimes it might get boring because it goes on and on and on. But I guess it's testament to the Australian Croatian scene just how much how vibrant it is, and and it's not just the um, the men seniors we're talking about. You know, there's the women's teams uh, as well that are starting to come through. Good, the juniors as well, and that's something we're we're going to talk to you about today. But uh, um. Josip Zilla, I'm gonna to have to call you Josip Zilla and Josip L, um, because there's too many Josips around here, isn't there? Um, Josip Zilla, there's, there's, yeah, we had during the week we had a, a, an announcement about the under 17 um, talent identification camp that's happening up in Townsville, and quite a yeah. few young Australian Croatians have been selected in that. Yeah, so uh, there, there has been, and look, in some of the actual, uh, the broader squad as well, uh, there was some other players that didn't make the final list, but I'll quickly run over the, those players. There were some Gold Coast Knights, Christian Mladenis, and at North Geelong, Noah Skorko, Zach Storsic, and Daniel Gnech. But towards the, fin the final list that the FA put on um, this week, or I think it was yesterday afternoon, actually, the, yeah. the button for Townsville, Michael Vonya, who will be joining us on the show a little bit later, goalkeeper, who is part of the Keelor Down Secondary College Football Academy and also at Melbourne City. Uh, we'll, and we we'll also wanted to congratulate players uh, Nicholas Zdrilic from Sydney United, the nephew of David, uh, his teammate Zachary De Jesus, and a former teammate of theirs, Anthony Pavlicic, who are also, all from Sydney United, and also Luka Blažević from Adelaide, Croatia. Oh, brilliant. And, that's, and that, that um, Luka, you know, Adelaide, Croatia is sometimes one of those little clubs that doesn't get too much recognition. It's great to see um, a, a youngster like that coming up through the ranks at um, Adelaide Croatia Raiders and, and getting on the radar. So that's good to see. Um, Josip, our guest tonight, Michael, um, he's joining us a little bit later on. Tell us a bit more about him. Um, you know him quite well. And tell us, you know, what set him out from the rest of these kids? Um, because he's obviously, you know, he's got something special about him. Yeah, Michael's, uh, it, first of all, he's a lovely kid. He's, he's, a, he's a terrific human being. Uh, he's always helpful with our younger kids in the program. Uh, he's obviously been part of Melbourne City for several years now, doing wonderful things up there with uh, Simon Zappi and the crew at Melbourne City. Um, and he's in year 11 this year with us. Uh, we've also got his sister, Stephanie, who's in year 10, and his little brother, Jordy, um, who's in year seven. He's just joined us now. So the, the family connection with the school is brilliant. He's... Uh, his dad, Michael Senior, if, if you want to call him that, used to go to uh, our school as well. And back in the days, we used to, Michael and I are very similar in age. So we used to play against each other. He was a St. Albans Saints junior, me a Knights junior. So it's an interesting story. And he's, and their mum, uh, Mikey Steffs and uh, Geordie's mum, Tanya, oh. is also of Croatian heritage. And uh, her brother, Mark, was in the same primary school class as me for six years. So it's a very intertwined <laughs> Uh, relationship that we have with the kids but terrific family um really respectful kids and and really talented kids as well hard working as well right that's that that, that, that sums it up right when they got a, yeah. a good family mix and they, they, they've got a good work ethic too right and speaking of work ethic your spare like the 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 passion and, and the desire for football comes from from yourself into these kids your journey started uh, you know, some years ago, and uh, we want to get a little bit of a uh, retrospective look about your journey in football. Do you want to just give us a quick, you know, helicopter view of uh, where it all, where it began and where it, where it took you? Oh, so it began quite late for me, which probably helps me with coaching. Um, I didn't get the bug for the game until I think 1993, going to watch the Knights, and um, you guys will know Mark Baduk is my cousin, so. Uh, as a kid, yep. I just he was just cousin Mark to me. But um, that particular day, if you'll remember this image, I do because it, it got me hooked on the game. Uh, near post cross, Zoran Trachevsky whips it in. Dukes at the near post against South Melbourne. Packed house at yeah. Summer Street. He scores yeah. a header. Yeah. And uh, and I went home and I said, "Now, now I want to give it a crack. I want to I want to play a bit of soccer." So how old I'd were you then, mate? Bit. I was I was eleven, turning twelve. So very wow. very late. Just 
just didn't have the bug for it. My dad obviously tried yeah. to to push the ball in front of me, but I was more into to playing with army men and um, you know building <laughs> forts and riding my bike, karate, uh, swimming, everything but football. Um, but then when I got the bug, uh, that yeah. was it. I actually went to Croatia in '94 as well and played with my cousins in Rijeka uh, on a car park as they do over there. You know, when the car park, yeah. cars are all um, out and about, the kids go out and play in the car park spaces until until the cars return. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's where it started for me, guys. Excellent. Good stuff. I know I know you, you worked your way up through the Melbourne Knights and played in the National Youth League, the old National Youth League um, Southern Division. And um, it was, you, there were some rather illustrious players that played alongside you that, that went on to, to play senior football. Um, recall some of those names and some of those guys that you played and, and who were some of the players that really stood out from the rest? Oh, there was a whole heap of them. Look, the dandy boys, Ivan Kladica, Ivan Gelimanovic. Um, we had oh, Anton Kovacic, Anthony Pelican, uh, the Palika brothers. I'll probably miss somebody here, but it was yeah. it was a good group. We, we were fortunate enough to have a young Luciano Trani as our coach for one of those years. And and still to this day, that, that's a guy that left a massive, Im yeah, a, a massive impression on me as a, as a person but also in my journey to become a coach. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, my experiences there, I remember Adrian Savinsky coming down, and I tell this to kids at school all the time, um, when he was coming back from injury or Keller, uh, Ivan Kelic, um, and then playing with us in the youth team. I, I learned more from those guys as a player than I did from any coach I ever had as a junior, because as you guys would remember, the coaching back then was two laps in a game, three laps yeah, in a game. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah. having, having a, an Adrian Savinsky, who for me was the most clever player I'd ever played with. I uh, had the privilege of playing with him at least three or four times. And he just put you through. You'd make the run and he'd put you through at the right moment. He'd, you know, draw two defenders to him yeah. and slip me in. So, um, yeah, that was those experiences. It was, you know, it was a really strong competition. I think I broke in when I was 15 into that under-21s comp and, you know, had a bit of a taste of it. Then 16, you, you do the Colts in between and then back to your junior team. It was full-on football back then, a bit different to how it is now. Yeah. We go on about how different it is now and how, how, how you know, for a lot of us, we're nostalgics, the NSL nostalgics. We talk about, you know, the NSL being so much better than today. But in your eyes, in your mind, was there more opportunities for youth in that era, in the National Soccer League era, as opposed to today? Or, or, or are things changing today as well with, you know, clubs like Western United, uh, Melbourne um, City, Melbourne Victory? having teams in the NPL competitions or youth teams in the NPL competitions? Hard, hard to gauge now because I think they're still so young with, with their process of the youth teams. But I know back then, for example, I, I had the opportunity of training with the first team on several occasions. And one particular time we went to go to Adelaide City and four of us young boys were called up to the squad. That very week, though, on Tuesday, Carlton folded. So Knights ended up signing Stabar and... Uh, Daniel Vasilevsky and a whole, I think Lubo returned. So and they all us young boys were basically sent back to the youth and said, go and stay in the youth for another year, which yeah. was a bit disheartening at the time because you think you're on the cusp of something. But yep. I think it's always been the case. There's, you always have to, you have to stand head and shoulders above the rest. And I think nobody can ignore that kind of talent and, and dedication. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, opportunities and what comes, what, what comes for the youngsters today, Let's talk about Kilo Downs and what the program that you're up to. How did this concept come together um, with yourself and uh, I've forgotten his first name, uh, George Cataforis? George Cataforis, yeah. 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 So, uh, well, very quickly, George, George was my teacher. So I'm an ex-student of the school. I graduated in 2001. So it's been... Uh, it's been a long time since I, I finished year 12 there. Um, I then, you know, went overseas a little bit, did a, a different kind of uni degree uh, in sport admin business management, didn't really like it. So I went back and did education, which was something I always th thought I would end up in anyway. Um, and then ended up at that school just by chance. I put in my application to be a, a casual relief teacher. Uh, someone retired that afternoon and I went back in for an interview <laughs> and got a job there. And 15 years later, I'm still there. And I think that sounds, like in every profession. That sounds yeah. like the fuck, the fuck to it. Yeah. <laughs> someone resigns, <laughs> someone walks in. <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys would know, in every profession, after a period of time, you, you sort of, you think to yourself, um, you know, you've, you're comfortable teaching. I've been doing it for eight years. And what can I do next? Like, I've, I've reached the, 
I guess, my, yeah. my peak in, in terms of what I'm going to do as a teacher. And I looked at, you know, obviously my, my biggest passion uh, outside of my family is, is football. And I said, well, what if I did it within school? So I sat down with George and George's wife, Sandra, is, is also from Otokuglian. So he's technically <laughs> half pro as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Um, and we sat down and I just said to him, Georgie, I was a kid, I was a student here. We never had anything like this. We always had good players, you know, your Jason Kalinas, Sash Bechanovskis, the Delev yeah. twins, Jason Vukadin. But we never had a program. The guys would just turn up from their club stuff. We'd train, we'd play, um, and we'd win lots of titles. And, and that was the end of it. I said, we're here every day. We've got a facility. Why don't we do something like the AIS used to be and just see, see where it takes us? And that was in 2014. We launched it in 2015. And now, eight years on, I think you're, you're sharing some images now of our boys yeah, winning yeah. the Premier League Cup, where um, for us, it's, it's a really proud thing because we're the only non-sport specialist and zone school. So what that means is all of these kids have to live within five kilometres of the school to come to the school. We can't right. pick and choose. Yeah. Um, so Maribyron can, Roville can, John Faulkner can, Cedar can, uh, Box Hill, the other you know schools that we play against, they can all do that. We yeah. can't. We haven't got that luxury. So we've had to yeah. design the program and basically educate ourselves to become better coaches to to base to create this to create this environment to create this space where excellence is is expected Fabulous. from all the kids. Now, now is it true your sip? And I I, I, I vaguely re recollect conversations with you in the past where um, I, I'm sure that you've said that there have been families that have actually moved into the zone um, where the school is just so that their kids could actually enrol at Keeler Downs College and be part of this school. Is that true? It is. It is. And and it's funny because wow. I know a few real estate, real estate agents in the area <laughs> and, uh, and they sort of say the same thing. Um, yeah, look, it is. And it's, it's. I guess it's a testament to to the culture that we've built there. But um, I think like anything, when it when you take your time with it and you put the, the interests of the people at heart and for us, you know, the, the, the kids, the, the personalities that we work with, there's 140 of them in the program, um, boys and girls. For us, that's the number one. And if the relationship with them is number one, then the football side of it's a lot easier. That's really good. The um, you, you mentioned some of the uh, caliber of the players. I, I, I mentioned to you during the the day today that Jason Shulina last night was with me at a match here locally, and he was trying to he was trying to pull out George's name out of his head, but he couldn't help it. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you've had some interesting players come through the ranks of Keelor Downs as as players that have moved on into the state and national leagues. Um, look, looking by what you're designing here, I don't think that's too far away by, by the way they're going about it. Yeah, look, Mikey's Mikey's one in the in the in the right direction, but there are we've also managed to what we're really proud of is actually move kids into senior football. Uh, at our local club. So we've become this little network for clubs that ring up and say, listen, I've, I've got no budget, but I need a 17-year-old, 18-year-old midfielder. What have you got for me coming through? Yeah. Um, and we're, we're more than happy to help them because we want these kids to reach the highest level possible. And I think yeah. that's probably the most unique aspect of the, of the school-based program is that we get a kid from year seven, well, grade six, and we pick them in the trials, and we have them through to year 12. That's a, that's a six, six and a half year relationship that you build with them, which... Yeah. I know from, from my experiences in club football, you just can't do it in club football. You, you can't take your time with the development of a player because you're always worried about who's going to coach him next year, who's the new TD, what direction is the club going in. Basically, for us, it's our direction, our, our platform, and um, it's now paying dividends. Like That's, that's the beautiful part, and we, we hope it continues for many more years. So what what's involved for us for a student to be part of this program? What's the what's the typical week in in say um, a student's routine with with this school, with this, sorry, with the soccer school side of things? Yeah, so look, they they get selected from from a group of trialists, and we try and as close as possible to get a 50-50 gender balance in the group. But COVID's affected us a bit with with girls, especially trialing, because I don't think they've had that exposure in primary school to fall in love with the game. So. Uh, in year seven and year eight, out we were a little bit top heavy with boys. But then, since since the kids come to the school and they see what the kids are doing at training, like for this learning how to massage and recover that you see in the footage there, yeah, um, they they become basically engrossed with it. They come and do an extra trial after school. So we've got after school sessions, before school sessions, and during school sessions. And there's a there's a big timetable where everybody's kind of got their own time to be out there and and with the coaching staff. So. 
Um, you know, goalkeeper coaches come in on a Friday. We got Adam Rehorzen, who's another ex Melbourne Knights boy, yeah, okay, um, yeah. in a local in the area. He's he's fantastic. Well, the work he's doing with our keepers is out of this world. And his brother um, Richie coaches as well. I think is he at Dinamo still? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's taken the year off because his daughters are doing really well. Um, both playing, ones at the um, NTC and another ones at Moreland. So the girls are doing oh, fantastic right, yeah. things. And yeah. I had the privilege of working with them at Dinamo last year. So um, yeah, so it, it's. It's just a special way to do things because you can take your time, you can focus. Like you've just shared a bit of footage. We've got yeah. you know a drone, a VO, five GoPros. That's you put awesome. them up there, you yeah. film it. Yeah, kids can see their development. They yeah. can actually see what you're talking about instead of us, you know, yapping at them and barking like dogs. Well, yeah. you touched on a really good point there, where you said you've got them for about six years generally, right? Um, I know since I moved to the Gold Coast, and when when we were inquiring about uh, opportunities for Ben. We realised how how massive the school football system is here on the coast, let alone throughout southeast Queensland itself. And one thing I've picked up on is MPL season here. They move games between now to June, midweek, because kids do not want to give up their school football. So they keep the yeah. school football for the Saturdays and the Friday nights, and the wow. league's done. The league's done in Tuesday, or Wednesday to accommodate for it. Yeah. And look, if you think about that, like, yeah, we, we tried that. We actually applied to become a club uh, during COVID um, where we could have an, a girls team and a boys team. And we didn't mind what league they put us in. The community league would be where we'd start, obviously. Um, yeah. But we would play kids a couple of years above and it would be more about the training and we'd take them on tours and trips. So yeah. we might go to a Croatia for four weeks and, and tour the country and play games. Or we went to Spain a couple of years ago and had a massive experience at Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to do that. We were rejected at the time by FV, but that day that you guys showed the footage of the boys winning the final, Kimon Teleodorus was there. And he said, we want to revisit what you've promoted because we now understand what you mean. So he's going to yeah. come for a coffee. I'll take him on face value. He reckons he's coming for a coffee to talk to our principal and us next next term. We'll see how we yeah, go. But every every right. Greek likes a coffee. <laughs> absolutely. And we've got a good machine in our office. But well, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right about that because... When they play for their school, they're playing for kids that they've literally grown up with for several yeah. years. You know, the club yeah, scene, you know, people that change, they there. move. They, yeah. That's right. So their passion for each other is amazing and, and the bond's massive and, and obviously the buy-in's huge because, you know, we can we can basically say, hey, your grades aren't up. Well, we do do this. Your grades aren't up to scratch. You're going to come to the training field and you're going to catch up on your homework before you join back in with the squad. And if it's not done, you're not eligible for selection. And, mm -hmm. and that we've, we haven't had to do that now for four years. That's how strong the culture is with the older kids saying to the younger kids, do your work. And that, yeah. that mentorship is yeah. kind of yeah. akin to what we had with, you know, Adrian Savinsky's and that coming yeah. down and playing with us and guiding the younger players, which is massive. As a teacher, I guess, and, and as a coach, do you find the kids that are involved in this program tend to have a bit more of a mature outlook, whether it be with because of their football, but on their studies and, and, and overall, you just mentioned that mentorship as well. But is that sort of something that then you guys try and be not just a teacher-student relationship, but more of a coach-mentor-slash-pupil-player um, uh, type of and how do you combine the two roles? You know, like I'm sure you're a teacher, you know, in class and what you're not, but then out on the field, you're you're a coach. Um, how do you how do you, how do you kind of synthesize the two? It's that's a good Excuse one because two. today's a really good example of that. So Wednesday for me, I have a year seven group, which is our youngest pups. Um, I have them uh, for a ninety minute session in the early morning or mid morning. Then straight after they have our year nine group, okay, so it's a, an hour break between the two of them. And then after school, we had a trial match for our nine and 10 selection squad. So yeah, you have to put on different hats throughout the day and, and different kids require different things. And it's actually made me a, a far better coach at explaining things um, because I can break down something as simple as a technical element of a skill, but also add the complexity to it because I have to do it with older kids. So. The relationship with the kids actually changes and we you know these boys mikey vanya for example he's he's like it's almost a peer relationship now as opposed to in year seven where it was you know an authoritarian type of coaching yeah. structure where the kids have to yeah. listen toe the line um and that's that's such a wonderful thing mm -hmm. because like one of our boys you guys have seen this with the dynamo page philip lassar who's who's uh, graduated uh, in 2020 at our school fantastic yeah. atar score you know got a scholarship to melbourne 
um, and also a really good footballer, mate. One of the most dedicated kids I've ever seen. Like every morning, literally taking free kicks, corners, pens. Um, he comes back now and he coaches the kids voluntarily at the school twice a week, Tuesday, Thursday, no before way. he goes to dinner. Yeah. He was there yeah. this morning with a couple of the older boys who wanted to work on their free kicks. We've given them a key to the storeroom and they basically come in at seven, seven in the morning. They do their no session. Way. They're out of their way at 30 and off he goes to uni. So yeah. I, I don't know how you can quantify that when you compare it to, you know, MPL, drop them off, do their hour and a half, go home, no more connection with you until I see you next time. And yep. then three, four months off. It's it's a different world. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's good. It must be nice, uh, rewarding for yourself to see, uh, you know, an alumni come back and treat it in that respect. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Well, three three of our current six coaches, that seven coaches that we've got involved, three of them are ex-students. Um, two of them are studying teaching. One's a goalkeeper coach studying economics. And obviously, Phil, that's like four, actually. So there's my counting going wrong. But <laughs> um, we, you know, they've, they've gone through our system. We've got our own curriculum, which I wrote a couple of years ago and have been adding to it. So we've got our own mapped out plan for these kids. And obviously it deviates because sometimes you get a kid that's so talented that you have to tailor their experience to be different to the rest of the yep. group. So it's an individual conversation. So I'll go to a Tonchi and I'll say, Tonch, you're fantastic. Your right hand side's amazing. Let's work for the next six weeks on your left hand side. So in all of our training games and all of our practices, try and deviate to the left side of the pitch and let's see if we can get a bit of swing on your left foot cross. And then at the end of the session, it might be a review. How many did you get in? Let's check it on yeah. the video. You guys check it tonight. We'll send you the link and then let us know tomorrow and we build on that. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure the kids, um, most kids hate doing homework, but if they're set homework by the soccer school, that's a different story. Yosip, I wanted to talk about something that, that, that you made a comment on on a recent LinkedIn post. And um, Josip Zilic um, um, added to it. And it was a very interesting point. And, and I mean, we could have a whole night's discussion about this. But you were having to go, basically, there was a there was an um, NPL coach that had punished his players on the Monday morning because they hadn't received the right result. Now, we all know the NPL youth system is there to develop players. But obviously, things aren't always the case. Um what what's your take on 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 youth development through the NPL climate, the current NPL youth climate, juniors climate? Uh, the filtered version. Um, <laughs> no, being completely honest, anything, any model that has pay to play as its main uh, fu function of or basic way of functioning yeah. is always going to have compromises, and it's always going to be difficult. And are you always going to get a coach? that is a coach or a teacher or someone that understands the education and development process as opposed to someone that does another job and probably does that job really well but then has to go and put on a new hat and be able to uh engage with a group of kids after a long day at school look it's it's the best we've got at the moment mm. can it be better absolutely can the schools do more with it yes like i'll give you an example we've got four boys from melbourne city in the program one boy from melbourne victory and our relationship with, with those two technical directors is such that they trust the kids to train with us once a week and have a night off, especially the city ones because they're in Casey Fields and we're in the west of Melbourne. So it's it's a good 90-minute trek to training and back. That On a Wednesday, those boys, those four city boys will train with us and instead of going down to their club because they know they're going to get the same value from their training session. And if they've got something particular to work on, it's a quick text message from the technical director to say, Hey, we noticed this in their weekend games. Can you guys uh, incorporate this into your session? Not a problem yeah. because, like I said, my our whole program is about the holistic approach to the kid. So if they've seen it and they're, they're a full-time kid at City and we can help them, why not? You know, we share ideas with them all the time. Um, yeah. And I think there's a little bit of that still lacking, but it has changed. I know the first couple of years that, that LinkedIn post that I did was a lot more common. Um, it is a bit rarer now. And, and the person that did it probably in the heat of the moment, like we all are, you know how it is guys, when human emotion is always a lot stronger yeah. than human yeah. reason. Um, yeah. and if he had his time again, he'd probably, he probably wouldn't have done that. And, and at the end of the day, the TD stepped in and it was fixed, which is, which is fortunate for the kids and, and we're yeah. okay. We're in a place, I mean, in a better place now. Yeah. Good. Awesome. 
Well, Josip, um, this is awesome. We're having a fantastic conversation with you, having a fantastic discussion with you. Um, if you can hang around, we're going to bring after we're going to have a little bit of a break. When we return, we're going to bring Michael on, one of your students, one of your star pupils, um, who he's going to talk about his selection in the Australian Under Seventeen Talent um, Training Camp. We'll also talk about his experiences, I guess, as as a recipient of the Akila Downs College Soccer School um, base of knowledge. So don't go away, folks. You're tuning into the Ozcrow Soccer Show. The Football Outwear Show, um, and that is streamed every um, every uh, Sunday night at 7pm, covering the entire western suburbs of Melbourne. And um, it's a great pleasure to ease, look at the power of modern technology and uh, modern streaming. We're able to uh, speak to our next guest, who's coming from the Melbourne City Training Camp in, on, out in Casey Fields, Michael Vonya. Michael, welcome to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Very good, mate. How was training tonight? It was good. It was good. I was with the 23s tonight. So with the um, all the other A-League boys that didn't play tonight in tonight's fixture against Sydney. So it was good quality. Yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Hey, Michael, congratulations uh, on the selection to the under-17s Joey's camp coming up in uh, Townsville, mate. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's been something that I've wanted to do for the last couple of years now. Like... That's been probably my main goal to represent the country because I think that's that was my dream at the end of the day. I want to play for the country. I want to play professionally. And yep. if I can do it on the biggest stage, like the World Cup, say, for instance, in the under-17s, like, yeah, that's it. That's a goal. It's a great reward for yourself and your family for the uh, for the efforts to date to get you to where you are right now. Um, yeah. anytime, you, anytime you can put on a national uniform, mate, uh, to represent something that you're passionate about, is a credit to the person you are and the people that support you to get there. So well done on that, mate. Now tell Thank us, you. Michael, what, what what was the process involved? How did you how did you get to this stage to be selected? Um, did it start back with the various talent identification trainings um, that the Football Victoria, say for example, offer, or was there certain trials that you had to attend? Uh, so look, so I think majority of it was done um, by them watching us. So mm -hmm. I remember about a year ago, we played a friendly, so like my Melbourne City team at the time, we got all the 06s, so the 2006 spawns, and we played the um, TRDC team. So the team that were like the other 06s from around Victoria. And Trevor Morgan actually came down and he was watching and he spoke to us about it because it got taken off the 2005 spawns because of COVID in 2020. Mm -hmm. So we went that's pretty much it i mean <laughs> there's not really much else to it i got like a there was lots of rumor especially at the start of the year that it's coming up it's going to be a pretty big thing there's going to be a training camp on the holidays yeah which obviously i've been caught up to which is i'm really yeah. happy about that that's and nice. yeah that's about it and uh you're part of the kilo dance uh soccer school we, yep. we got you, you've got Yosip still on the show. I don't know if you can see him on your screen there. Yeah. <laughs> so be careful what you say. So, no, he's seen this head, <laughs> he's seen this head way too many times. <laughs> so, how, how do you how do you enjoy the, the program at school? And, and, and do you find a great deal of difference between what you're doing at school at a club, or do you find a lot of synergy, a lot of um, relative uh, activity going on? Yeah. Look, the bonding at school is just it's just like it's you can't compare it to anything else like it's nowhere near what we get at Melbourne city like the culture at school like especially because most of the senior boys that you were showing before that we won we won the cup this year we, most of us have been to spain together and we've experienced like the best of the best we've been at real madrid we've got thumped against atletico like we've seen it we've seen what it takes to play at like those high high level clubs 
And I think like the bond between us, especially like all the boys that went overseas, it's just um we're like brothers, we're like family now. Like it's yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yossip, tell us a bit more about that trip. Um, we've seen sort of, um, I've heard about that in the past, the trip to Spain. How was that arranged? And, and what were some of the experiences the boys um, boys um, experienced on that trip? Yeah, so we took, we took admittedly, a very young group of boys to a, an under-16s tournament. So Mikey is now at the age that he could have played in that tournament two years ago. Uh, and a lot of the boys, he's actually the youngest boy that we took in the squad. Um, and physically, they were nowhere near the, the level required against the Spanish teams. The Aussie teams we competed well with, um, but uh, Rayo Vallecano and Atletico Madrid did give the boys a good lesson. Not only uh, technically, but also physicality and how to use your body and, and how you've got to become a, a different person on the field when that, when that white line fever hits. You have to become protective of your space and of yourself. Yep. Um, and then the boys spent two days training at Real Madrid with their under-19s uh, under coach who took them through basically what Real Madrid would do. And that was, I mean, apart from the complex itself being out of this world, just listening to the way they coach. And I had the fortune of, of talking to Atletico coaches a bit at the hotel and also the Real coaches and showing them what we're doing at school. And they basically leafed through it and they said, you're spot on, just stick with it, give it time, it'll bear fruit. And what Mikey Fair said to- now... Um, yeah. It's starting to bear fruit for, for these young boys. Like I know for Mikey, I, he would have come back from that trip speaking to his dad and absolutely determined to make sure that he can take every learning opportunity from that, improve himself, so that when he gets an opportunity to you know, make, be in these talent ID camps, that he's ready to go. So, Mikey, do you, do you know uh, 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 any of the other boys that are going in the squad in the Joeys at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So I know... Um, I know four four of the boys from Vic so okay. we've got obvious we got the three from City so you've got Benny Benny Dunbar Zave Stella and John Callis so I play with them sometimes in the 18s competition yep. and there's another boy George Mihalides from Victory Melbourne Victory and okay, we've good. all of us actually all of us we played two years no actually 2019 for Victoria the under 13s nationals and we won it yeah yeah, so talented, talented group of players for sure. When, when do you take off for the camp? Monday next week, and we'll return Friday. Okay. Good. What are, What are some of the other goalkeepers in the in the squad? Do you know much about them? Well, I know they're both from Sydney. I know one of them's Croatian. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yep. Yes, that's yeah. right. Um, from Western Sydney Wanderers in Sydney. So I look forward. Like I haven't, I haven't really had um like exposure to hopefully like they're really good keepers because it'll be good man to see what else is what else is around australia what what i can compare myself to yeah, yeah. just how that we um, amazing we saw during the week the school gave you a, a nice bit of recognition for your efforts um it was on the uh social media pages there where they had you out in front of the school for a photo opportunity mate um yeah. how, how, how are you how are your schoolmates taken to the announcement are they, are they wrapped for you yeah, like yeah, everyone's coming up giving me high fives, handshakes, all that stuff. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's good. That's good, mate. You're sip the recognition that the program's getting. We're, we're talking about it. It's not something that's that's you know been um, born fruit overnight. It's t- had to take years for the for the actual program, the foundations, the building blocks to be put in place. But outside of the program itself, within the school, from your own school staff, your your own principal. Um, as you mentioned, Football Victoria are only now starting to sort of take notice of what's going on. But is the program starting to get a lot of recognition and, uh, you know, acknowledgement from from some of the powers that be starting from your own school? Yeah, the school's always been supportive. Our principal, uh, Linda Maxwell, who, who came in after we'd formed it, so she was there as an assistant principal. She carried on with what the previous principal put in place, but he basically said to us, what do you need to do this? This is an engagement thing. It'll bring people to the school. It's good PR. And we said, we need a good field. We'll take care of the rest. So he, he sorted the pitch out and she basically took over from it. And she's been trying to you know, give us more time release, to have more time to plan, to go and speak to kids, to um, improve things around around the program, um, You know, adding it as a year 10 elective subject so kids do uh, strength and conditioning blocks, yoga, Pilates, that sort of stuff within that as well. Um, 
yeah, the, the support, like the staff love it because they know that if our kids are out of line, if they, and they do, you know, kids make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Yep. Um, yep. But we're on to them quickly because, you know, the school portal, all of the soccer kids are on a thread and I can just check and see how they're tracking both academically in a positive way and if there's been any negatives. And it's a quick conversation. You know, it's like, hey, pull your head in. Can't do that in class if you want to represent the school. And generally speaking, again, you have your ups and downs here and there, but they, they've just bought into it massively. Um, and the staff respect that. And we hope, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking at a project with Brimbank Council to make a brand new synthetic field, a FIFA A standard one within wow. the school, which, which would be a game changer for us because we could theoretically have all of our teams training, uh, all of our squads and groups training on the same night, which um, would be amazing because you can then chop and change. And one of the things I was going to say to you guys, which has been good for Mikey, is pushing kids up when, when they're ready. Uh, in terms of technical and, and understanding of the game rather than just waiting under 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s. Yeah. If the kid's 12 and he can play with 14-year-olds and it's going to help him improve or her improve, sure. why not push them up? You're, 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 we're, in a, we're developing individuals within a team environment and that's that's our focus and, and that's why it continues to, to gain traction. Absolutely. Hey, Michael, one, one last question for me, mate, before we... Uh, who's driving you home, mum or dad? Mum. Mom. All right, say hi to mum for us. What's for Vetula? I don't know at the moment. <laughs> Better that's maybe ask my, dad. He's the one not, that's at home. Yeah, that's not my question. Right. My question is, <laughs> my, my question to you is, or more so uh, trying to uh, withdraw out of you uh, a statement. For for young viewers who might catch on to this, uh, probably maybe tonight or even watch this on replay, a bit of advice about time management so that you can get the best out of yourself in your performances on the field and also in school? Yeah, look, for me, it's a sacrifice. Like, I've had to, like, sacrifice going out with, with my mates, like, on the weekends when they go out. You have to you have to eat right. you got to get your sleep. Like, I know all my mates, they go to sleep around, like, 11, 12. I'm in bed, 8.30, 9 o'clock. I need my sleep. I need my rest. And I just a little one percent is that's it yep. like if you if you put in the yep. work you'll get the results that you deserve common theme taunch in other conversations we've had with the young men I, so far this year mate absolutely sacrifices galore yeah right? yeah we talked yeah. to nikki volatovic and luka skorko um when they'd gone to croatia and they were trying to hit hit a big in a big time over there and and that was one of the common denominators that take they talked about speaking of which yossi but i believe um young nikki scored on his first time that he's, he's yes. played in 90 minutes or something like that for first his first Primoz. 90 minutes for primates and he scored mate and uh yeah they, i think they, they it's, res, rescued a point so good there you go it's it's and it's all about that that sacrifice and being patient and and eventually your goals will be achieved if you work hard enough michael once again congratulations on on um this the first step to to um, your ultimate dream of becoming a professional footballer and i'm sure um you will achieve that in years to come and we look forward to uh watching you and trekking your move and um wish you all the very best with your football career thank you very much guys Michael, all the best in townsville mate we look forward to hearing the results thank you and uh, Yosip, thank you for joining us. It's always an absolute pleasure, mate. We're going to have to get you back on the show again in the not too distant future. But uh, uh, everything we talked about youth development today, we didn't even get a chance to talk about women's football. That that might have to come next time. But um, thank you so much. It was just absolute pearls of wisdom. Good on, uh, you're welcome. As my former editor in chief at the Croatian Herald. Yes, we uh, go a long way back. <laughs> anything for you, my friend, uh, and for my namesake, same thing goes. You guys are doing wonderful things, and, and I think uh, sharing as much as we can um, from from the young players to the older, experienced people. Um, knowledge is great. Knowledge just helps us grow, makes us think, and, and be critical. And that's what we want to be um, to become awesome. better. So, awesome, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you gentlemen. very much. Really and we look forward to chatting to you guys again. Good on you. Thanks very much.